Hello and welcome back to the Rest of Saga YouTube channel and this time we are back at the Myford lathe and this week we're doing a particularly important job and that is making sure that the lathe is set up properly and accurate. I want to make sure that it is cutting along a piece of steel or a rod in a completely uniform fashion. So let's get stuck in, check it out and check the lathe out. For those of you who may not have caught up so far, um, this is my 1950s Myford lathe that I procured probably two or three months ago now. And I've just been spending a little bit of time and money on bringing it up to spec and really getting used to using it. I've never used a lathe, I've never owned a lathe. This opportunity came up to buy this and I jumped on it because I've always wanted one of these. And I particularly like the fact that it's sort of in well-used condition, but it's in really good condition too. As you can see, I already have a bar set up here um, and I've taken some test cuts and what I'm going to do is take a uniform cut along the bar, leave two raised areas at the end and a slightly recessed area in between. And that is what the Myford Notes and Operation and Installation Maintenance uh, state that you should be doing to check how accurate your lathe is. Before that, a few things to do before you start your lathe. I'm going to top up the little oil cups here. I have, since the last time I used it, I left that running by mistake. So I'm sure all the oil is now, as you can see, sitting on the little tray here underneath. Now, why is it important to set a lathe up? Well, if you're cutting along a bar such as this, you want the two ends to be exactly the same diameter. Um, if they're not, then it is cutting on a taper. And that generally means that the lathe bed, so the long bit, for those of you who don't know, um, is twisted. So it sits on four feet, one, two, three, four. And if they're not tensioned correctly, then there can be twist. Even though that's a heavy duty piece of cast iron, that can still be twisted, which boggles my mind, but it's true. Especially true for lathes that sit on a wooden base, which this sort of is. There's a big sort of one inch thick board underneath the sheet of aluminium, but it is bolted to this heavy duty metal stand. Now, I don't yet have the metal stand bolted to the floor. That's a job that needs done. There are four little bolt holes, and I think I'll drill into the floor and bolt it down. That would be great. Up to this point, I've used a little spurt level on the, the bedways um, to check that they're level this way and that way. And the, the bubble seems to be sort of about right. I put one little washer under this foot here just to bring it all true. So now it is time for the acid test as such and run this rod um, and see how we get on. I'll, basically I'm going to machine this shoulder down and then bring this all to one level. I don't know if I'm going to do the recess because I'm not really sure what it really adds. Um, and then we'll check both ends. So that's the plan today. We'll get stuck into that. Um, those of you who've been following this might notice I have a new tool holder. I went for the Genuine Myford item. I think it looks pretty slick. And I am using indexed or sorry, indexable um, tungsten carbide inserts. The reason I'm using that, I guess, I'm sure I should be using high-speed steel and grinding it, but number one, this is an integral garage. Um, my children's bedrooms are upstairs and I'm probably going to be working on the, using the lathe at night time and how I'm starting to grind steel, that's going to wake the children up and make me very unpopular. It's also a lot handier to use these little inserts. I'm not making sparks, parts for the space shuttle, so I'm sure that the finish I get on these will be absolutely fine. So I'm going to stick to those. Um, ever, there seem to be quite divided opinions on that, but that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, as you can see, I'm getting quite a good finish on it as it is. That's with an insert. I've done both sides of that. Um, what else have I done? There's a little bar around here somewhere. Yeah. I turned that down from a M12 bolt. I uh, turned the head down and I've also bored down the centre of it. It isn't anything in particular. Maybe I'll make it into a pen one day or something, but it's just a piece of steel that I was practising on. And it feels really nice. It's got a beautiful finish. I haven't sanded that or anything. That's just exactly what I got off the, t the carbide insert. So um, this piece here hasn't finished up just as nicely. But Right, let's get the camera set up show you some cool lathe shots of turning down this piece of metal and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this is sort of the best I can do with my current camera setup. Um, it's from the back of the lathe, which isn't great because you'll not be able to see the tooling, but it's a nice clear picture and it seems to be well lit. So let's give it a go.
I have to say I'm quite pleased with the finish along that. It's not perfect, but then I'm not a perfect lathe operator. So I'm going to do one fine finishing cut along this and then measure both ends. And hopefully that will give us a bit of an idea as to how we are working out here. Maybe I should just do this properly as per the lathe manual and I'll recess the middle. So let's get the tooling turned around and take a bit of a recess out of this. Okay, so I've got this little bit recessed here, these two bits remain raised. So I'm just going to turn the tooling round and take a light slip, skimming, not slimming, skimming cut along the two raised areas and then check for uniformity with the micrometer. Just checking my tool tip here. Seems to be okay. Right then, using the micrometer, sorry, knocking the camera, we're going to measure this end. Camera isn't showing that up, but we're 7 in the big scale and 12 here. I will do a video on how to use a micrometer, but the important is this bit here at the minute. These are thousands. And from that, we are within a thigh. There we go, show up in camera, just as proof. So we're within a thousandth of an inch. <clears throat> I'm really pleased with that. Um, this lathe is, what, 70 years old? Just over 70 years old, and I think that's pretty incredible accuracy. Um, not a bad finish in these, it could be better, but something to work on. I am practicing, as I said, I've never used a lathe before, so I think we're definitely making progress. So there you go, I've done an accuracy test on the lathe, absolutely delighted with it. Seems to be highly accurate across that bar, which is the recommended um, factory way to test your lathe. I haven't had to change the tension in any of those bolts. It seems that that really heavy duty stand on which the lathe sits is doing the job, keeping it nice and rigid and giving me accuracy. I'm going to make more videos as I practice and learn how to use this tool, which seems to be so versatile. It's absolutely blown my mind when I've done more research since buying it. Probably should have known that before I bought it, but there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it, and fire all your comments down below. I am open to all suggestions as to how I can improve how I use this lathe. I'm going to do a video on how to use a micrometer coming up soon, as I'm learning that myself. I'm not used to inches, I'm a metric man, so even that is a bit of an education in and of itself. Find me on Instagram and on Facebook as well, or reply to comments and post various things across that. And I also try and release a reel every Tuesday morning. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next week. Cheerio.